Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday to each and every one of you. First, let me begin by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I did my first Facebook Live on Saturday evening as a virtual book launch of my book, and I can't express just how pleased I was with um, the encouragement, with the support, with the well-wishers. I do not take this for granted, and I am so very grateful for each and every one of you. If you missed the virtual launch, it's on my page. You can watch it. Um, there's some good information in it, um, and hopefully it's information that you will be able to use or share with someone else. I encourage you, um, as you are being blessed by my videos or being challenged by my videos, or even if my videos are simply stirring something up in you, because even the stirring up something in you is a baby step. It's beginning to stir the waters of discomfort, the stores, the waters of complacency, the waters of, 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 I've gotten so used to my misery, I'm just going to sit in it. It stirs the water to encourage you to be sick and tired of being sick and tired and to make the decision that, you know, I want to do something to kind of change my life. I want to do something so that I can experience all the goodness and joy that there is to experience, so I can experience healthy relationships, so I can feel good about myself, so that I can learn to forgive and let go. But anyway, thank you so, so much. Today, I want to kind of continue our talk on lowering anxiety. And I, we've been talking about triggers. We had talked about um, identifying what your own individual triggers are. And last Friday, I talked about grounding, being able to bring yourself back to the present when you become triggered. Today, I want to talk about something that most of my clients could um, relate to, and I'm sure some of you will, but when you have been traumatized, when you have high anxiety, one of the things that happens is you may tend to go from zero to a hundred really, really quickly. Zero to a hundred meaning you were okay, you were doing fine, and the next thing you know, you are really, really angry and you're going off on somebody. Now, some of you may say, I don't really do that, but some of you do it the opposite way. You don't respond, you don't respond, you don't respond, you take it in, you take it in, and then one day, seemingly out of nowhere, you explode. And what you're exploding about may seem really minor to someone else, but it's an accumulation of all that stuff you had stuffed in. So we have two extremes, holding things and then exploding, and then for some, it's the Something makes you feel unsafe, something makes you feel challenged, and you just explode. And so I want to kind of share this a little bit by sharing a story um, that, just sharing a story. So I was doing a group with um, veterans, and one gentleman was sharing about an experience he'd had. And so in this particular group, everyone there had been traumatized, and everyone there, for the most part, had combat trauma. And so this gentleman was sharing that he was driving and it had been raining and someone had cut him off to the point where his back bumper made slight contact with the back bumper. And somehow or the other, they both were able to pull into a gas station. There was no harm to any vehicle, but somehow or the other, they both pulled into a gas station. When they got out the station, my group member was furious. He was absolutely furious. For a lot of people who have experienced trauma, road rage kind of goes along with it. Because when people feel like they're being threatened, when they feel like they're not safe, they go from zero to a hundred. And some of you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, they're standing in this gas station um, lot and they begin to argue. And my client says to the person, um, do you realize I could have really hurt your car? We could have hurt each other. What were you doing? And he identified that this person was from another country. And the other country sort of doesn't really matter, but the person was from another country. 
well, the country itself doesn't matter, but the fact that the person was a foreigner does matter to the story. And here's why. Because he said as they were arguing, the person called him the N-word. And he said before he knew it, he had hit the person so hard that the person ended up on the ground. And he had also cracked the person's glasses, but the force of his punch had hit him so hard that his own false teeth fell out of his mouth. Well, how many of you know we just laughed about that in group that you hit somebody so hard that your teeth fell out? But when the laughter subsided, I said to him, why did you hit him? And he said, because he said, call me the N-word. I'm tired of people from outside this country just feeling like they can call us any kind of names. And then I said to him a question that may have seemed kind of silly to everyone else, but I said, what triggered you? What about the N-word triggered you? And he then told us a story of being a little boy growing up in segregated North Carolina and being in town or downtown with his dad and watching um, someone from a different race humiliate his father in front of him by calling him the N-word. And back then he could do nothing about it but just sit and watch his father be compute, completely humiliated. And I share this story with you because on the surface, when he hit the gentleman in the gas station, the N-word, we would automatically think, oh, well, we just don't like the N-word, that's just inappropriate or whatever. But remember I said, triggers come from somewhere. And what was triggered in him was not just the N-word, but something specific about it. It reminded him of a memory when he felt totally vulnerable, when he felt fear, when he felt anger, but could not express it. And that's how a lot of us felt when we were being traumatized or going through whatever we were going through. We felt like we were vulnerable. We were angry. We were scared. We were sad. And we couldn't do anything about it. And so now that we are no longer currently actually actively being traumatized, when something happens that touches on those feelings of anger, touching on those feelings of fear, touching on those feelings that we're not comfortable with, our brain, our, our, our reptile brain, because that's where the trauma re relies, our reptile brain will say, fight, fight, or freeze. And a lot of us go straight to fight. And that's why we go from zero to 100. And we go from zero to 100 so quickly that the people around, of, around us are ca caught off guard. And they're like, what just happened? Why are they responding in such a over-the-top measure? It's because that thing inside of you, your, your reptilian part of your brain is saying, I need to protect myself by any means necessary. I often equate it to killing a mosquito with a shotgun. You bring off all the power you have within you because your brain does not recognize if it's a real trauma or if it's something that's in our mind our brain immediately goes to respond. I'm going to stop right here to give ourselves a time to pause, to give ourselves a time to think. And I want you to think about what, how do you respond when you feel like you're being threatened? And what do you perceive as threats? Sometimes people perceive as threats just the way someone looked at them. And tomorrow we will go deeper into that particular phase of, of, of triggers. But for today, because I try to keep these posts under 10 minutes as best as possible, I would invite you to have a wonderful day on purpose. The sun is shining here where I live. Hopefully it's shining where you are. And even if it's not shining outside, let it reside someplace in your heart for at least a couple of minutes today. Love you all on purpose. Bye-bye.